break when I tell you to, defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Referee Dave Paris, one of the most experienced in the country. And this has got all the makings of being a pretty entertaining fight for the Southern Area title because uh, both of them like to come forward and both of them are very busy. First round then. Vince Feeney against Francis Ampopo, who's on the comeback trail here at the age of 29. And Popo, the black boxer, on the far side from you. Just switching to Southpaw at the start of the fight there. And Popo. Interesting. Yes, and already he started looking for, for big roundhouse right and left hooks. So against the Southpaw, he becomes a Southpaw here, and Popo. Obviously something they've thought about strategically as he's moved straight into this style. What do you think would be his thinking, do you think, there, Glenn? Well, I think maybe just to try and confuse Feeney early on, but uh, he has to be sharp and doesn't have to leave himself open. I think you know, he probably thinks Feeney's not the biggest puncher, so he can afford to take a little gamble. You do often, you look for the right hand against the south force, so maybe he's thinking if he leads with the right, it'll be more effective. And Popo was a good puncher as a flyweight. Whether that travels up to bantamweight with him, we shall see here, perhaps. Has had a world title attempt against baby Jake Matlala in this very ring, beaten in nine rounds. And Pofo. Can often be difficult though, can't it, for fighters to turn back the clock in their career? Yes, that's a, a very hard thing to do, but it could be a, a great opportunity for, for him, Pofo, and this could really bring the best out in, in him. But he needs the confidence, and maybe he can get that against somebody who's not regarded as a puncher like Feeney. Feeney's plan will be to stay busy, pile up the points if he can, but he's looking to be pretty heavy-handed. Here is Ampofo. Setting himself for the punches. Yes, Ampofo really planting his feet. He's not looking to, to jab. Every punch is almost a hook. He's looking to get maximum amount of weight and, and balance leverage into every punch. Feeney will have to hold his boxing together under that kind of assault. Working quite neatly behind his southpaw jab, Vince Feeney. Oh, and there's a big right hand, though, and again from Ampopo. Best punches of the round right at the end, and he ends it with a smile across his face, Francis Ampopo. Welcome back to the York Hall in Bethnal Green. There's Francis Ampofo, a man who's fought for a world Go title, ahead, looking for a southern area championship at Bantamweight tonight. Second and that's his up. good work at the end of the runway, landing with Round a couple of good, strong two. right hooks. It was a pretty confident start from Ampofo. He prepared to stand right in front of Feeney and look for the big punch. Good left hook from Feeney. Ampofo tried to close the range and still boxing as a southpaw here. Ampofo. Normally he's orthodox. And that may just have upset Feeney's thinking a little bit. Sometimes fighters, when they do this, only end up confusing themselves. Yes, it's, it's often difficult to carry out and do it well, especially if you're if you're not used to being a switch hitter. But certainly at this stage, I'm probably sticking to the south core stance. Occasionally a little bit wild with these hooks, Ampofo, but he's quite prepared to do that in the hope that he'll thud a few home as he did right at the end of the first round. 
It's nice work from Feeney, who's not, and it's worth repeating, a concussive hitter himself. No, Feeney very much just has to keep to his boxing. Just keep nice and sharp. Punch straight and straight through the middle. I think the battle lines are quite clearly drawn already in this fight. And Popo thinks he carries the extra power, and I'm pretty sure he's right about that, even up at Bantamweight. He's looking to blast Feeney out of there, wear him down with heavier shots. Feeney has to pile up the points with his boxing skills. Interesting mix, isn't it? It is. We all thought this would, would gel well. He just instantly switched back to orthodox there, but again, he's gone into the south cross stance and four four. Not really been on target much in this round and four four. Lots of missed punches. Feeney's been outscoring him with the neater boxing in this second round. Good little southpaw jab there from him. It's a good test, this, for Feeney. He's had his setbacks, and that may have affected his confidence, but here's a real chance for him to rebuild himself. Be a very good name to have on his record if he can beat Ampofo. Looked ragged, frankly, in this second round, Ampofo. Just hasn't found his range or his timing. It's coming a bit close there, a little clash of heads. And I think Feeney has to watch out for that. He does have a tendency to cut. Very little punch economy from Ampopo, who missed over and over again in that round. Fight for the Southern Area Bantamweight title in the ring at the moment. On the jabs, Feeney leading by 21 to 4 so far. Not Really, that surprising, Glenn. No, it wasn't. I think that told the story of that round. Feeney just keeping his boxing round together nice three. and making Ampofo miss and just look a little bit ragged with his work. So I think really that's the, the form line for Feeney. That's what he has to try and do round after round. Third round, due to go 10. Difficult, really, to see where Ampofo would go from here if he was to lose this one this late in his career. So it's a vital night for him to continue his career in professional boxing at any significant level. One of the questions has to be with Ampofo is, does he still have the ambition, desire and skills that took him to the British and Commonwealth flyweight titles? Did lose that Commonwealth title to Daniel Ward of South Africa. 12th round knockout. And now Ampofo's gone back to orthodox. They wonder if he's just getting a little bit frustrated with what he was trying to do. He scrapped that and now boxing off his normal stance. Feeney using his skills well there with his back to the ropes. Bouncing out of trouble off those ropes. Pressure fighting, letting the hooks go, but not really landing with very many of them. Again. At the moment, it's going well for Feeney. Yes, again, it's, it's good boxing from Feeney. He's just he's just falling into a nice little rhythm, and he's just making Ampofo miss a little more than obviously Ampofo wants to. He's reverted back to orthodox Ampofo, and he's, he's getting closer, but he's still not that accurate. Body shot is a good one from Feeney. Apart from Ampofo's attempted switch to southpaw at the beginning, this must have been the tactics that Feeney was expecting. He was caught with the left hook there. But it's been a rare success for Ampofo. And that was better from Feeney, just turning Ampofo off the ropes. He's got to keep away from the ropes. He doesn't want to get pinned there. 
Clown Popo. Again gets you with the right hand and this pressure just occasionally showing signs that it might tell. Quite an examination for Feeney, but he's keeping it together at the moment. South Africa against Australia, Thursday, 1.30, lunchtime, Sky Sports 3. Live now, we're going into round four, Feeney against Ampofo for the Southern Area Bantamweight title. Here's Glenn and Ian again. Thanks, Paul, and don't forget, British Super Middleweight Championship fight coming up, David Starry and Sam Storey tonight as well for you. Fourth round of this one, Ampofo with his shaven skull, the former star at flyweight. Really looking to put Feeney under some pressure here at the start of the fourth round. Pinning him against those ropes, almost nailing them there. Feeney raises his glove to the crowd as if to say, no problems, weather that without any hassle at all. This is better for Mampopo. This is where he wants Feeney pinned against the ropes, where he can get his hooks off. Occasionally he's getting success with these hooks. But he's always been a good value for money kind of fighter, Ampofo. You very rarely get a dull fight with his style. Yes, he's a, a pressure fighter who's always looks exciting, always tries to make a good fight of it. Feeney just has to keep his head, keep his boxing under control. Very much home territory this for Ampofo, who's based right here in Bethnal Green in East London very popular figure within the fight fraternity looking a bit ragged there and caught by the right hand counter just breathing a bit heavier Ampofo questions about whether the tank is starting to run dry a little bit yes, well, Ampofo has been made to work hard because he's trying to put out everything into every punch He's setting his feet and he's really, you know, when, you, when you're made to miss like that, it takes such a lot out of you. Right hand from Ampopo. Still hope for him. To be fair to Feeney, he's absorbed the punches so far when he has been caught as well. Again, and Pofo made the miss wildly there. Much more accuracy from Feeney, who's putting up a pretty impressive display here so far. An improved display, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yes, I think uh, a good opponent's making him fight better. He certainly is a nice, confident start, and he's doing everything right, slipping off the ropes there. a cut by the eye for Feeney left eye don't know whether the heads clash there certainly coming close together in some of these exchanges but it's a problem for the young man from Sligo just when he seemed to be riding the storm pretty well Feeney is cut in that fourth round We believe that it was a punch that caused that injury. Now then, maybe uh, the detective work here backstage will give us the clues we need. Yes, a good, good right hook moving away from the punch. Caught him right on. It looks as if that was definitely where the, the damage was done. And that'll do a, a bit against the confidence of Feeney. He just dent the confidence. He was going well. He was everything under control but then he just upped the pressure a little bit on poor four missed with a lot of punches but that one certainly didn't that was a good solid right hand and that's caused the damage williamson in the corner there with dean powell working with feeney Fifth round, due to go 10, remember. The white shorts and shaven skull of Francis Ampofo. Still looking to get himself back near the top. 
He's asked a lot of questions of Feeney. And so far, the 23-year-old Irishman has done pretty well, but Ampopo is still very much in this fight, believe it. Yes, and he's getting a, a little more confidence. He's closing the distance down. He's starting to, to be a little more accurate with his punches. And poor poor. This walk forward aggression all the way from Ampopo. Ampofo will be looking for signs that this pressure is just beginning to break the resistance of his opponent. None so far, except the eye damage. I think he's having to work very, very hard now to keep Ampofo off him. Stop us, stop us. Time Watch the use of the head, says Dave Paris to Ampofo. Paris particularly mindful of the fact that uh, Feeney has that cut. And he doesn't want a clash of heads worsening it. Back to South Poor again, Ampofo. Cut doesn't look too bad at the moment, does it, Glenn? No, it certainly doesn't look as if it's worsened any, but this is pretty heavy pressure from Ampol. Not a great deal of, of good work connecting, but he's certainly working hard, trying to get, trying to land more right hands. But he's really making Feeney work here. that southpaw jab to try to keep Ampopo off him but Ampopo at times is like a tiger becoming a grueling affair Ampopo very much just went for the head I like to see him mix it up a little bit Go for the body more. He's been missed, made to miss so many times going for the head. Very good round. Both giving it absolutely everything. It's a good fight in the ring, and we hope for another one later when the super middleweight prospect David Starry, here he is from Suffolk, bids to become Suffolk's first ever British champion tonight. This man could really shake up the division. He's in with the veteran Sam Storey, vacant title, and Starry with the whole of the Ipswich Town football squad here to support him tonight, and this is how he sees the fight. I can see myself win, and obviously um, I've got total amount of respect for Sam Storey. He's been a great professional, and he still is a great professional, but um, I think now's the time for, like, like I said before, the young blood to come through, and I'm, I'm, I've got no doubts that I'll, I will come out the winner and then, uh, you know, look to perhaps other big fights later on. David Starry, only 22 years of age. It's Gordon Holmes there with him, helping him with the bandaging. Sam Storey will be 11 years his senior. Good fight coming up, and in the ring, round six of this Southern Area Bantamweight Championship fight. Shaven skull, Francis Ampopo on the far side from you. And Vince Feeney looking for the biggest win of his career so far. Here's Glenn's scorecard. Yes, I've got uh, three rounds in the lead for Feeney. Just as better boxing, and Paul was pushing forward, doing a lot of work with so many punches missing, and just a sharper work for me coming from Feeney. Interesting to see how Dave Paris is scoring this one, because it's a, sometimes a difficult equation to sort out, because maybe the more solid blows have been landed by Ampofo, but certainly a lot less of them. Well, I'm talking noticeably quiet starting this round. There were maybe a few signs that he was, he'd worked that hard. He was looking a little tired as he walked back to his corner. And it looks as if he's having a, a little breather here in this round. Is this a bad sign for Ampofo that his work rate's starting to drop off? And he's now, well, 
kind of letting Feeney take the fight to him. It could be a change of strategy. It could be that he's uh, just running out of petrol a little. Because he may feel that it'll be easier to catch Feeney if he allows Feeney to come to him. scorecard I had it a little closer than on yours Glenn you had it what by three rounds by three yes I put it by a couple at the moment to Feeney somehow needs to try and take control of this fight which Feeney's not allowing him to do the neat skills of the Irishman serving him well at the moment and and Popo's fire has just gone out of it in this round has he been subdued let's see this is nice, thoughtful boxing from Feeney, and this has been a good round for him. It is certainly Feeney's round without question. Welcome back, Ian Dark and Glenn McCrory with you at ringside tonight for boxing live on Sky Sports from the York Hall, Beth McGreen in East London. Feeney has landed twice as many punches, or nearly uh, twice as many so far. Certainly a better success rate by, uh, well, double. We have him ahead at the moment. The 23-year-old Irishman, Ampofo in the white trunks. Can he pull this around? He needs some big rounds, doesn't he, now, Ampofo? Yeah, somehow he's got to try and get control of the fight and have a, a few good ones. He's just not doing the better of the work and Feeney's, for me, just just getting around by his better boxing. And Pofo needs to land a, a good, solid punch. I was asking the question earlier, Glenn, whether Ampofo's power has travelled up from flyweight with him. Sometimes when boxers move up the weights, their power decreases, so to speak. That's right, and it's always difficult against a, a bigger man, a physically bigger man, to hurt him. So that, that could well be the case. He certainly, he's, he's planting his feet and poor for. He's trying to land with the big punch, but he's just falling short, just a little out of range at times. And he's never really managed to ruffle the composure of Vince Feeney. I'm sure his corner men are very pleased and they've done a good job too with that cut. No real problems from that. And Feeney's boxing hasn't really been affected by the, the cut. He's kept himself together well, kept his concentration going. Hearn, the manager has just uh, visited the Ampofo corner, maybe he just wants to check whether everything's okay, because Ampofo's been quite subdued the last couple of rounds, but as I say that, he did land with a notable right hand, and a low right as well, which went unpunished. Ampofo landing with decent headshots here, having a good little spell. He's moving through the gears again, Ampofo here. This is a man who's been in championship fights and prevailed. And he's showing again here that he's not done with just yet. And Feeney is suddenly under pressure and is beginning to ship these punches. One or two danger signs for the Irishman here. He's being caught more regularly than at any other point in the fight. Suddenly, Ampofo comes back to life. In this seventh round. Also, Feeney has to be careful at a time like this that the heads don't clash together. 
terrific effort right. from Ampopo, who drenched it back up again in that round to win it. Well, he was looking tired, but he managed to, to pull it up from somewhere, and that was a very good round for Ampofo. He threw a lot of punches, and he was successful with a, with a great many as well. And he just seemed to, to ruffle the feathers of Feeney a little bit there, just had him on the back foot, getting through some good punches. Real good effort from Ampofo. I thought that maybe his effort was beginning to die in this fight, but suddenly he found the spark again. Yes, he found it. We, we just said before that he needed to do something. He needed to try and get a bit more control in this fight. And, you know, maybe this is the, the key in this round. He certainly pulled up a lot of effort. That would have taken an awful lot out of Ampopo. But can he keep that sort of effort up? Decent fight, this one. And that cut's got a bit worse. My Feeney's eyes. Round eight. minutes remaining and the southern area bantamweight championship is at stake are we going to see a big finish from Ampopo one of those went a bit low a reminder from the referee to keep the punches up Feeney is starting to get hit with ominous regularity from his point of view pulling this sort of effort from Ampofo because he looked tired in about the fifth but he really is putting up a, a tremendous effort and he's starting just to, to get through the defences more and more been in some hard battles before Ampofo he does have that ability to come back He is a wee bit more battle-hardened than Feeney, and that's serving him well in this phase of the fight. And Feeney somehow has to try and get back to his boxing, just try and keep Ampofo off. But he's unable to get the jab working. Well, maybe when Ampofo went quiet for a round or two, he was just setting himself up and giving himself a rest for the big finish. Because he's really coming on strong now. Well, he's certainly done that. Has to be careful he doesn't burn himself out with this sort of effort. It's another concerted attempt by the former British and Commonwealth champion and world title contender, Ampofo, to break the spirit and resistance of Feeney. This is certainly the most dangerous phase of the fight yet for Feeney. And Feeney's trying so hard to get back to his boxing to, just to push them punches out. But he's finding it difficult keeping them off. He suddenly found a lot more accuracy as well. Ampofo, he's still missing a bit, but a greater ratio are getting through. Almost anything could happen, you feel now, in this last two rounds and a bit. And the cut's got a lot worse. The cut is a lot worse by the left eye of Feeney. Nothing to stop the fight at this stage, but the corner will have to do some running repairs, no question, in a few seconds' time. But time and time again, he's... And Paul was caught Feeney with that right hook. And that's right where the, the damage to the eye is. This is getting close now, and Popo's won the last couple of rounds. Now, on my scorecard, Glenn, I have this four rounds to Feeney, three to Ampofo, one even. How about you? Well, I've got Ampofo just... Uh, I've got, sorry, I've got Feeney still winning by, by the two rounds. But certainly Ampofo getting back into the fight, keeping the pressure on. He was looking a little tight at the end of that round. It really was a superhuman effort. Two very good rounds for Ampofo. And there's the accuracy, just getting it back a little bit. And you see, it was that sort of punching with the right hand that has increased the damage to the, the cut of Feeney. 
There's confirmation of Glenn McCrory's scorecard, a one-point margin. So that is uh, effectively a two-round advantage. So if Glenn is right, and Pofo needs to win both of these last two rounds, and maybe to score a knockdown as well somewhere, if he's going to uh, pull this around. I have one round in it at the moment. Doesn't much matter, quite honestly, what Glenn and I think. Only Dave Paris's opinion will count. Ninth round, can Ampofo continue this late rally? Just bulldozing Feeney into the ropes there and looking strong, Ampofo. Yes, he's got the momentum going in his work now, Ampofo. Just rolling forward, keep trying to throw the hooks. And he's just nullifying the jab now of Feeney. So tribute this to the fitness and conditioning of Ampofo pretty late in his career to come back like this in the fight. These jabs now by Feeney look not much more than attempts to just keep Ampofo off of him, and they're not really working either. Now he's managed to duck and catch a lot of these punches thrown from Feeney. Can Ampofo sustain this? He really has worked hard the last couple of rounds. Feeney does need to re-establish himself. It's not quite so sharp in this round, Ampofo, though. No, he's looking a little tired, just his work's not as good. A little messy, starting to miss with punches, and this could be the opportunity for Feeney to get back to his boxing and start landing with decent punches. That's good from Feeney. Three-punch combination. And still fresh enough in the legs to dance his way out of trouble a bit off the ropes. This is what he needs to do. This is the strategy which will see him to victory. pointing out again just how important a fight this is for both men. Feeney, who's lost a couple of times when he's been moved up in grade before, would really prize this scalp to get him on his way. And Popo's looking to find his way back into major title fights. And he knows that the seconds are running out in the round and he's looking for the big finish, but maybe Feeney just edged that one, I don't know. What do you think, Glenn? I think that was a uh, quite an even round. Feeney was, was landing little sharp punches, and Popo was getting the, the more meatier ones landing. It was a, a very difficult one to score. I think I would have just given it a, an even round. It's certainly a very, very good fight. We thought it would be, and it's, it's really living up to that. Good left hook from Ampofo. That was his best punch of the round. Because he had his successes, but they were a little rarer in that round. Overall, the computer says Feeney's landed 171 and Ampofo 152. Not really very much in it. And they call him the pocket battleship these days, Ampofo. And he's a real little warrior. And Feeney, neat boxing skills from him. Will it be enough? Tenth and last round. They wink at each other, smile at each other through the gun shield, and somebody switched off the lights they could do without that. Well, I think both of them sense that the decision could hang on these final three minutes. Only Dave Paris knows that. Could be that way, couldn't it? It could well be. It has been a close fight. Lost of the rounds could have been scored either way. But this is a great luck. Last round from Ampopo, giving it all here. What an effort this is from Ampopo. He's just standing there, planting his feet and letting the hooks flow. Well, if ever anybody 
is showing he wants to win this fight. It's Francis and Paul who given everything in this last round. I think to be fair to Finney, he wants it just as badly too, doesn't he? I'm sure he does. A big miss there from Am Am Popo. What an effort this is from Ampopo in this final round. Real grit showing his championship quality of the past. A man who's beaten Robbie Regan, remember, James Drummond a couple of times. Darren Fifield became a Commonwealth champion as well. Is this his route back? Or has Feeney just about done enough? We'll soon know. He's starting to get through with some big ones. Feeney needed to get out of there and did. This is really throwing everything into every punch here, Francis Zampopo. He may find that it was a mistake starting the fight in the in the south force stance where he, he threw away a couple of rounds doing that and he may regret that when this fight's over and Popo. The blood seeps from that wound again by the left eye of Feeney, who has a few words with the referee. Popo has never heard of reverse gear. Right. And at the moment, he's in fifth. Well, he's winning this last round very comprehensively at the moment, isn't he, Ampopo? Yes, he is. He's the one doing all the work. He just can't get his boxing together because of the constant pressure from Ampopo here. But will it have been enough? In just over a quarter of a minute, we'll know. Another result could be a, an excellent draw in this contest. But would these two guys want to do this again? Just a lot of effort. Just depends how the referee Dave Paris has been seeing it. There goes the foul. Feeney's got it. Feeney holds on to win despite Ampopo's brilliant last round rally. Very interesting to hear what the margin was there. I would think it was pretty close. Glenn McCrory's scorecard, well, by half a point in the end. And in the end, I scored it exactly the same way. Feeney by half a point. Yes, I give him poor for the last round, but with a tremendous effort. But Feeney, for me, had just done enough and just just got it by a, a half point one round margin. Brilliant effort from Ampofo, who certainly was not disgraced there. And well, there may be other fights for him. I was saying in the fight that it will be hard to see where he'd go after that, but it was close enough for him to continue his campaigning, I'm sure. It's the biggest win easily for Vince Feeney, who showed some real grit himself. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dave Paris scorecard reads for Ampofo, 97 points. For Feeney, 98 points. And the new Southern Area Bantamweight champion, the Sligo Kid, Vince well, Dave Paris's scorecard Ladies had that as six rounds to Feeney and four to Ampopo. A two-round margin for Feeney, who becomes the Southern Area Bantamweight champion and wins his first title. Well done to Vince Feeney. Hard luck to Ampopo, who was terrific value for money as ever. In a value for money fight, 13th win. For Vince Feeney, he's had his setbacks along the way, as we mentioned, but an overdue title belt. So well done.